Welcome to Bridge of the Atlantic. We are your host, music web designer Ross Barber, owner of Electric Kiwi, where we create awesome custom websites for bands, artists, and musicians. And I'm award-winning singer-songwriter and indie filmmaker Marcia Novelli, founder of the electronic rock band Midnight Soundtrack. This week, we're welcoming LA-based singer-songwriter Molly Moore to the show. Molly's been building a name for herself on SoundCloud with her brand of intelligent pop. Her singles Don't Believe It and Natural Disaster have been played thousands of times and have solidified her as an artist to watch. And Molly recently signed a publishing deal with Amalgam, and we're looking forward to finding out more about what she's got coming up and advice she would offer to other musicians who would like to build an audience on SoundCloud or sign a publishing deal. Hey, Molly. Hey, guys. How's it going? I am well. We, we won't well. tell people that was my second attempt at that, at that because I can't speak. Um, but totally. everyone else won't know that, so we're good. <laughs> so Molly, tell us three things about yourself that everyone should know. Three things about myself that everybody should know. Okay. Um, I'm really all about the music. That's like my whole life right now. I, um, I grew up acting, but music is really like where my head's at right now. Um, I, they should just be random things. I have like a growing OCD with like cleanliness ever since I moved into my new place and just like keeping everything super clean. So that's just like a random fact that people can know about me. Um, and what else? Um, yeah, I feel like I kind of like came out of the womb as like a songwriter. I've just been like making melodies and lyrics and putting them together since I was like, seven and knew how to write so it's just like all i really know how to do <laughs> i was gonna say I, i'd love to see that and then i thought no i wouldn't like to see that you can go to the room as a songwriter so it's kind of like <laughs> mixed feelings on that one. Oh but, my like, gosh. what yeah, instrument would you have come out with nice. what I'll instrument guitar. Would, probably guitar that. Play guitar but That'd be painful <laughs> That would be really painful. That's really graphic, actually. <laughs> we'll just leave it at that. Um. <laughs> the image you put in my mind when you said that. I was like, God. Uh, Marcio, I think I need to rein you in. Um, so, Molly, you've been building a name for yourself on SoundCloud. And actually, that's how I first heard you. Uh, because I got an email when Natural Disaster uh, Matthew Shell's remix of it came out. Oh, nice. And... Um, and yeah, I, I loved it when I when I heard that. Thank yeah, you. I love that song. Thank yeah, you so it's much. awesome. Um, how important has SoundCloud been um, in establishing yourself both as a writer and a musician? Oh, it's been everything for me. I mean, I started putting music up like only about a year ago or like uh, 11 months ago. And um, it's been like my entire platform up until about three months ago. I got my music on iTunes and Spotify, but... Um, SoundCloud is a crazy platform because there's all these people that only listen to music on SoundCloud. They don't even use Spotify or iTunes because SoundCloud's just this huge, like, it's like a social network. It's like Facebook. Um, so it's been really awesome to just kind of like throw paint at the wall. Like the first thing I posted up there was a demo and like, it just got a lot of love, like not like a massive amount, but like people were listening to it. And I was like, that's really cool. Like I haven't had any music out for I mean, I had like older stuff out when I was younger, but I hadn't put out music for a couple of years. I'd really just been like in the studio trying to like hone my craft and work on writing. So SoundCloud's been like, like just huge for me um, to just be able to put my music out there and like just reach a whole audience of people that you otherwise wouldn't reach, you know? Yeah, yeah. I actually, how do you, how do you reach people on SoundCloud? For me, when I first started, I mean, I had like a, the, the social media is a whole like game and like with Twitter, like you can like follow people and they'll follow you back and hopefully they'll check you out if they, you know, are actually like into music. And um, so for me, like I was sort of like trying to do the whole like building my Twitter fan base thing. And then like simultaneously when I put out hallucinating, I just started following people on SoundCloud and they limit you like at a certain point, like I had followed like a thousand people and I couldn't follow anymore. But like, um, that's like a, a big way to just reach people is to just follow them because they're like, who's this person? And they could actually get interested. It's, it's sort of like the most organic way to kind of get yourself in front of someone. And then you can like, you can go message a bunch of random people, but it's better to kind of uh, just like, it's sort of like a like on Facebook. It's like, Hey, I'm here. Like I'm reminding you of my existence, you know? So it's sort of like introducing yourself in this sort of passive way. But I think it's cool. Um, Cause it's, you can just, like grow something organically that way you know what that is so refreshingly honest 
I think, no, seriously, <laughs> a lot of musicians would not admit that they'd go out and follow people and, and because it's, it's really just about sharing. It, it's like an introduction, right? It's, totally. It's not, you're not forcing on anyone. You're just like, hey, if you want to check it yeah, out, check and it especially, out. Cool. I mean, especially when you don't have like money like, yeah. to promote your music. Like for me, like I became obsessed with like the blogs. Like when I first put Natural Disaster out, that was like the first produced song that I had out. And um, I hadn't really like tried to promote either of the songs. I just like posted them on Twitter and like I had like an automatic DM sending the, song, the link out to people. Sure. But, um, but when I realized like, oh, like I, I'm just sitting here, like I'm trying to like write, I'm trying to do all these things, but like there's something I'm missing. And like I started becoming kind of like obsessed with just submitting natural disaster to blogs because I could do it, you know, like I could just like there's like tons of blogs online and there's like all these ones that are accepting submissions and I just got really lucky with it like people just kind of took to it and it made me realize like how much control I actually have over my own career like all the things that are actually like in my hands that I can do like as opposed to just waiting for like some like big company to like come along and like scoop me up and like make it's me into like happen. a superstar like that doesn't happen no. like people think that that happens still and like maybe it happened like 20 years ago but like that's just not how the music industry is now so and I mean it's not even about that really it's really just about like connecting with people and like having them hear what I'm doing and feeling like I'm making some kind of difference you know so um yeah so I've just gotten like inspired in like a kind of do-it-yourself way from from the internet and like that platform of SoundCloud and just having that control I love that yeah yeah that's great I mean it's um yeah, I think too many artists do kind of take the approach of they sit back and they expect someone else to do it for them. So I think it's great that you you have taken it into your hands and you are making stuff happen yourself. You. It's it's yeah, it's important, I've, and I think you know everyone was you know everyone says you should build your team, and yes, you should build your team, but you need to do a lot of the groundwork yourself. Definitely, and, and you can't you can't like you can't always attract the right people if you're not doing that groundwork you know like you will attract maybe some people but maybe they're not the right people that are going to get you where you want to go you know and also yeah. just because you have a team doesn't mean you stop working in fact you're probably working exactly. even harder <laughs> the only person that's ever going to work the hardest for you is yourself and that's something i learned early on like even when i was making like demos that maybe i'm not so proud of today like i found ways to license them and i still make like random money from my like performing rights organization from like old demos that i like licensed for free to like the kardashians you know like just oh, like really? stupid stuff like that that like just like started to get my name going even though like the music wasn't anywhere near where it is now or where I want it to be like ultimately like to have that mentality with your craft I think is so important because there's like the creative side but then there's this whole other like left brain aspect of it which is like getting it out there and just exposing it and I think just like being unique in your ways that you like think about it and go about it is like important it's funny you just said like the left brain right brain dichotomy like i always find that too when i'm in when i'm in the writing mode that's all right brain you can't think business or right. any crap but once no. you have your your art done everything and i hate to say it, it turns into a product then right. you can think then you can think logistically like how do i get this out there what do, you okay. know, how do i get it on people's ears exactly yeah so i'd like to ask you a little bit about your approach so far so um, you've been releasing like singles rather than EPs or albums. Do you think with the way that people consume music now, is it more important to release this content regularly rather than waiting to release, you know, a, a bundle of, of tracks, I guess? Right. I mean, I think that there are pros and cons to both. Like right now I'm feeling like this urgency to put more music out because I haven't had anything come out since I think like it was... July or J June that I put out don't believe it and um and I think it's easier for people to grasp onto like a whole body of work even if it is just like a five song EP um to have that like in the works when you're putting out singles is like I think really important and um yeah I mean it's all about how you how you go about it for me like I'm really I'm trying to finish this EP and I'm working on a music video but it's like I'm doing everything myself so it's kind of it's a lot it's uh, a large workload um, and you want to you want to do it the right way you know like you don't want to just throw music online because you feel like you need to put new music up because you haven't um, I think it has to have like some like type of strategy behind it um, and yeah, 
that's sort of how I feel about it. <laughs> you recently just signed a publishing deal too with Amagam. Yeah, Amaga. Yeah, Amaga. Yeah, they're uh, they're a Dutch company, and um, they're actually the largest independent publisher. And um, oh, I'm really, really excited about it because, ironically enough, the president of the company, the one that signed me, he was the first person that ever heard like my first demos when oh, I was really? 15. I was like, uh-huh. I sucked. I was so bad. <laughs> and he, this guy like saw my like modely like picture with my blonde hair, and I'm like 15, and I'm like like trying to look all like tough and like these like pop rock demos that are just like literally like the first songs I'd ever written on guitar by myself. Right. Like my dad helped me finish the chords. Oh, that's so cute. <laughs> and um, yeah, so like I just have funny memories of like hearing this person's name and he like he like was the first person to say like, you know, it's not there yet, but there's something there, you know, like if you develop it and keep going, it needs like a lot of work, but it's cool. If I feel like it's like, full circle that I'm working with him now, especially on a songwriting side. It's, it's really exciting. And I feel like I just feel really, really excited. I've worked hard to get to this point. So yeah. can you tell us just a little bit about like what signing publishing can do for an artist and uh, how to get their attention? Definitely for me. I mean, uh, I moved out to California almost four years ago when I was 19 and um, I really just started trying to focus on writing for other artists when I came out here because I just wanted to get better at songwriting and I wanted to work with people that were better than me so I could just learn and and grow. And um, so uh, a publisher, like, on for that for that kind of stuff when you're writing for other artists they can really help find homes for those songs because i mean i wrote for two years straight and like not all those songs are cut on artists not by any means so like they can really try and like find the right homes for those songs and then also from an artist standpoint i mean they're like almost as valuable as a record label in the sense that they can like get licenses for your songs for film and tv which is one of the biggest ways to get like a new artist out there and get them exposure on like a wide scale so um publishing like, versus licensing what's the so difference it, so like my publisher has a, a sync team so and they they do syncs for film and tv they send me briefs i got one this morning for like a, a beverage company um and so like sometimes they'll be looking to like replace a song that they can't afford to license because it's like the weekend or it's like just they're looking to help out a new artist and they want a love song and they want it to be this and this and this and they have specific parameters um but it's really cool because it's i mean it's a way to make money a but b like to to sync your songs as an artist that's like that's a major major part of promoting i think absolutely yeah i can't even count how many new artists i found through film and tv i mean one Me thing too. i um i recently watched the like, mtv scream um oh yeah TV yeah show. and one thing that they did that was really cool was uh, um whenever there was a song playing by like an, uh, a relatively like new artist it would come up at the bottom now playing and it would have the artist's yeah, name cool. track title and i was just straight on twitter i was like following all the people and i was just like i just heard your track <laughs> on, on mtv scream love it that's awesome and um and yeah, it was just such a really cool idea. I mean, obviously you've got Shazam and stuff on your phone, but right. if you're not quick to, to use that to you find out what track... Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So I really liked that they did the now playing thing. And um, yeah. and yeah, I think it would be cool if more shows did that. Just exactly. to give that tiny little bit extra, you know, exposure to the people that, you know, that need it a bit more, I think. Right. Yeah, I I got really excited because, like, a couple years ago, an older song of mine got uh, placed on, like, Road Rules Challenge on MTV, and they put my name, like, on, like, a Chiron is what they call it or whatever, and it was, like, Molly Moore now playing Quicksand, and I was like, whoa. That's, that's really cool. pretty cool. <laughs> that's cool, because, yeah, it was so, yeah, I can't even imagine what it would be like to see my name on TV. Yeah, uh, it's 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 awesome that's a great like way to support the artist because playing them is one thing but to actually have their name that's like that's everything you could ask for as like a new artist you know so molly are you ready for 20 questions oh gosh i'm so not ready i'm getting anxious (laughs) just thinking about it yeah i'm totally ready (laughs) all right coffee or tea coffee meat or veggies (sighs) veggies i think los angeles or new york (laughs) <laughs> sorry right now los angeles <laughs> i feel like a traitor saying that all right <laughs> twitter or facebook 
Ooh, Twitter. I would pick that too. Yoga or yogurt? Yoga. I don't like yogurt. Something about the textures doesn't sit with me. Yoga, right on. <laughs> really, I, sound, I sound like such a 70s. I'm like, right on. <laughs> Groovy, gnarly dude. Yoga. <laughs> <laughs> Miley Cyrus or Katy Perry? Miley Cyrus. And keep in mind, you can always say neither. Oh, I can? Oh, uh, no, we, we don't like that. We don't like him when people say no. You might, when, it's, when it comes down to Miley Cyrus or Katy Perry, you can say either. But anyway, sorry. <laughs> friends or Seinfeld? Um, friends. Twerk or work? Work. Indie or major? Indie. <laughs> <laughs> Canada or Scotland? I'm from Canada. He's from Scotland. I, I guess we didn't oh, we didn't really let her know that in the, before the interview, like we usually do. So, I mean, I don't know much about either. Have place, you ever visited honestly. either place? No, but so I'm just Brandon. gonna say Canada. I'm gonna say Canada because I used a lot of people and tell them that I was from Canada when I was like seven <laughs> for no apparent reason at all. I would literally well, just tell people that I was French Canadian because I wanted to be. <laughs> Don't know why. <laughs> I was. I thought no it was one of the one of the because I know I know sometimes when Americans are like I, I've heard of Americans backpacking through Europe saying they're from Canada so that they don't get as much hate. Well, that's <laughs> but funny. There was yeah, no deep, yeah. pl- no logic, no political like reason behind it. I was just, like, young and I, I thought that like when I was younger that I could just like be from wherever I wanted to be from. <laughs> like that was like just like a thing that I thought. Like I thought I could just like lie and make up my life. <laughs> so, oh my gosh. <laughs> I oh, like you it. could. That would be cool. That'd be cool. We could. We'll just make up our histories. Why not? Okay, so I'm, I know the answer to this one, but Spotify or SoundCloud? SoundCloud. Imogen Heap or Ingrid Michaelson? Oh, that is so hard. Both of them are like my <laughs> two of my favorite artists. I know. I've been stalking you. Shit. Uh, <laughs> honestly, I want to... Ingrid Michaelson for her like full albums, even though I don't really like the last album very much. Uh oh, controversial. Also- <laughs> don't worry, Ingrid. I'm gonna I get like a, an, a hate tweet. Like, how can't dare be you, Molly? Like everything I make. Um, <laughs> and no, I really like Imogene Heap though for like her progressiveness and yeah. her sound. Like she and really. I saw- I saw her live a couple of years ago, and it was oh, did you incredible. Oh my gosh, that probably was, so was good. crazy. She, yeah, she really like opened my mind up when I was young to like doing something that was left but still pop. That really inspired me a lot. Mm-hmm. So I have to go with Imogene Heap, even though I feel like a traitor because I definitely <laughs> listen to like tons of Ingrid Michaelson. Simon or Garfunkel? Shit! These are so hard. <laughs> I love that shit. <laughs> oh man! Oh, and I just saw the their reunion show in Central Park. Oh yeah, it was crazy. Garfunkel's like, you can just tell they're both like there's so much tension because they haven't played in so long, and it's like this like crazy like explosive thing. Man, <laughs> I mean, I have to say Simon only because he had a career outside of Simon and Garfunkel. You know, who wrote, like uh, who wrote he, Cecilia? Was that Simon? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, of course it was. But then, like, Bridge Over Troubled Water, that's awful. Oh, I know. That's I mean, I pick, that's like, that's a draw. That's a really, that's too hard. Yeah. Okay. That, that's too hard. <laughs> I'm so passionate. <laughs> Breaking Bad or Homeland? Oh, this is easy. I don't watch either of them. <laughs> oh, was there a third other Can drama? I- can I pick Fear of the Walking Dead? Because I just got into that, and I don't even watch Walking Dead. But Fear <laughs> of the Walking Dead is awesome. Really, really dope. Cool. You've just destroyed one of our future questions. <laughs> yeah. Oh, is it Walking Dead? Is that the next one? Um, yeah, sure. Up. The Walking Dead or American <laughs> Horror Story? American Horror Story. Are I you love excited American. for the new season? I'm totally going to watch. Ooh, even though me too. it sort of lost me in the last season. I didn't really finish it, but oh, okay. I love the first two seasons. Of yes, America. Coven is, is one so of those. So good. Yeah. Michael Jackson or Michael Bolton? Michael Jackson. Come on. <laughs> I thought you were going to say the Bolt. I thought oh. you were going to say the Bolt. I don't even, honestly, I, I don't even know who Michael Bolton is. Like, I've heard you're that, too young. You're, 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 so you're younger than us. <laughs> 
You're younger <laughs> you know than us, so you Really? Okay, that. I'll explain. Michael Bolton, it's not that we're, we are old. Er. <laughs> but it's because our moms used to listen to Michael Bolton. So yeah, that's why we know. You should know. I Michael should Bolton know. was... Let's ex- let's give a little short little backstory to Michael Bolton. He, he wrote and sang huge love ballads in the early 90s. Late 80s, too? Late 80s? And late 80s, early, late yeah. 80s, early 90s. And well, what's, every, like, what's the biggest song? Like? I don't even... Um, mm. When a man loves a woman, that was a cover. Uh, yeah, but all the, all his videos had him like with this long curly hair, and like he would like go to the camera and do power grabs and stuff, and he was so like, I don't know. He was kind <laughs> of let's let's like, let's let's say this. He was kind of an an eighties and early nineties sex god for mums. He, he was yes. a heartthrob. Okay. Yes, right. he was. And if you look after this interview, go look it up, and you'll. I'm gonna just, do my research. Yes, yeah. and we're Michael hoping Bolton. to get him on the show. So that's that's Safe. the funny thing. Yeah. <laughs> That'd be awesome. Don't tell him that I don't know who he is. That's okay. I, I think every single time we do that question, I laugh hysterically. So it'll be funny if we do get him on the show. <laughs> oh, I know. Ricky Gervais or Ricky Martin? Who's Ricky Gervais? Oh my God. <laughs> okay. You know who Ricky Gervais is. I know you will. If I tell you. Okay, I was okay. born in 1992. Oh, you can Just... know who Ricky Gervais is. Come on. I've ever seen, uh, you know, at the office. The American yeah. Office. Okay, it's he's the guy who created that, and also he did the like he did the original oh, Office. Shit. He's oh, one who did the original Office in the UK. Um, Ricky Gervais. How else would you know him? How else would she know him? Well, I'm gonna pick him because he creates funny shows, and Ricky yes. Martin's kind of just like he's a genius, a Latin singer. He is a Latin singer. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, guys, getting hella real now. Hella real. <laughs> Uh, we just feel like way older than we are right now, or we just feel old. So I know, thank I feel, you for that. I feel Molly. ignorant and naive. Appreciate it. What's new? <laughs> <laughs> Whale or kale? Whale or kale? Sure. That's the one. <laughs> sure. <laughs> kale. Kale. Good choice. Bette Midler or the Riddler? Please tell me you know who Bette Midler is. I know who Bette Midler is. My mother raised me on Bette okay, Midler. Okay, so now we get, okay. I, and Here. actually, I met her once, so I have to pick Bette Midler. I how also, did, she's a, meet her? In, um, her son went to a school that went, that my friend's brother went to, and they were in a show together. And uh, she was just sitting in the audience, and I was, I've been obsessed with Hocus Pocus pretty much my whole I life. I love Hocus Pocus so, so much. It's like oh my God. My, favorite movie like i'm not even embarrassed so to say that excited. sorry i got me i couldn't control it's like, it uh, it's like, it's like my all-time favorite movie like if i'm upset hocus pocus comes on and i'm mm. no longer sad um so yeah i heard they're making a sequel i'm not sure if that's totally true rumor. but i heard I oh. don't don't get my hopes up like that because it was a rumor yeah i think it was i think it was a confirmed rumor that's, that's messed up <laughs> you don't mess you don't mess with diehard fans like that no, I know you that's know. like what, if making like for me that's like a, a second Fight Club or something. I'd be like, oh. <laughs> oh my gosh, Fight Club, so good. You dig it, yeah? Love I have a Requiem for a Dream. You ever seen that? Requiem for a Dream, I've seen, but it's been a really long yeah. time. But you dig, you dig it? Okay, we're good now. <laughs> you and I are good. Those are my two, two of my top favorite movies. Did I redeem time. myself? You redeemed yourself. Michael and you had yeah. you had me a hocus pocus. So. You know. <laughs> You had me at Hocus Pocus. That needs to be my Twitter bio. I need to change it. To I that. think we're going to tweet that right after this interview. We're I think we're going to have to. Only more. That's, yeah, there we go. That's incredible. Now, bear finally, all of this in mind. Now, everything that we've done so far, bear this in mind and channel it into your answer. Okay. Ross or Marcio? Messed up. <laughs> Messed up. We went there. Ross or Marcio? <laughs> Marcia Ross. Oh, I got the name first, and I'm good with that. See, that, <laughs> that was, was subconscious. Get, that was Marcia. subconscious. <laughs> she's like, she's got, she had to put one of us first, and she said Marcia. Well, I Ross. just felt like Ross. Oh, yeah. Oh, sure. Yeah. off of Marcio better. Sure, you know? sure. Oh, huh. sure, sure. I'm gonna that take helps. this. I'm taking this to heart. <laughs> I don't get many wins. Ross always wins. <laughs> oh well. well. What sort of a uh, what sort of music recommendations do you have? Um. <clears throat> ooh, I really like. Um, James Bay. I really like FKA Twigs. I like Banks is like my favorite artist right now. She's so dope. Um, and also uh, my like my all time favorite band. 
Ne next to Simon and Garfunkel is uh, Local Natives. I don't know if you guys have heard of them, but they are totally worth checking out. And awesome. there's this there's this weird guy we had on named Brandon Burnett at some point. I don't. Do I, you, I would steer you know? clear of anything, Brandon Burnett. <laughs> Really so Brandon Burnett, your boyfriend. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. If you if you have any sense about you at all, you will definitely check out Brandon Burnett. When we had him on the show, we we have to mention that he, he, you you definitely helped direct one of his music videos, and we were right behind you on that one, saying <laughs> that you need a director's credit. Which video, video was it? Uh, I, I want to be free. free. I want to be yeah. free. That's right. So just putting it out there, there, Brandon. Come on, man. Credit where credit is due, man. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> And uh, on the on the um, based on your recommendations, I have some recommendations also. Oh, cool! Uh, I I actually recommended the, uh, this artist to Brandon as well because he mentioned Banks too. Mm -hmm. um, a girl called Indiana. She's Indiana. She's from the UK. She's called okay. Indiana. She's awesome. Very Banks esque. And also uh, right. a favorite of mine and Marcio's is uh, Meg Myers. Yes. I love uh, Meg Myers. Yeah. Have, you heard, have you heard Lemon Eyes? Yeah, her, oh, yeah. her album just came out. Was it last week, last Friday? Her debut yeah, album. I, I have to check it out. Yeah. She's it's so good. dope. She's crazy. I love, yeah. I love her music. We dig it. Yeah, we love For her sure. too. And uh, okay, so we everyone can check you online on uh, SoundCloud. This is like your main home base right now, basically, right? SoundCloud, soundcloud.com yeah. slash Molly underscore more. That's more with two O's. Yeah. Uh, your Twitter is Miss Molly Moore, M I S S Molly Moore. Yep. And your Facebook is Molly Moore Music. That's it. Oh, you just couldn't get the same one for each one. That must have driven you crazy. It it still does. Like every day, <laughs> I have like haunting dreams. I'm like, should I take the underscore out of my SoundCloud <laughs> link? Oh my god! Like freaking out. If you out. ever did though, if you ever did, just just get like another SoundCloud with the old username and just say I am now here or something like that. You know, just send oh, that's kind of smart. Yeah, yeah I, I made this like dumb decision. I had it. I had Molly Moore, and I had uploaded like older music and so I was like I'll yeah. just start a new one and that was like the dumbest thing I could have done because then I lost <laughs> the link that I wanted and now can you all not these, change like, it? You're usually, can you not change well, the link? Because of like all the blogs that have covered me like if you type in my name and you go to any of those links you won't be able to find my music then if uh, I change the link. Yeah. I just say link the old one and I don't want to do that because I'm like that kind That's of all right. once you works get, like, against me. You, once yeah. you just get like a website and just link right to your sound it doesn't matter. It's all good. You yeah, know what I mean, if that even makes yeah. sense, you know what I'm saying? It's just like, yeah, totally. It's all good. Well, I have a website too, but it's, it's not it's not totally fancy. Like I made it, but it's a website. Right. Well, just putting it out there, you are currently talking. Not me. You're currently talking to a music web designer. This is the guy. So <laughs> oh, just let you know oh, that. You? Russ. He's oh, the awesome. designer. I'm the songwriter. <laughs> awesome. Well, if you want to help me make my website better, just let me know. <laughs> <laughs> so that sounded like. Like naughty or something, like <laughs> something about it. Just let me know if you need me to. Know. I, I'm <laughs> getting some kind of, I'm getting some hocus pocus influence here. Maybe, maybe. I don't know. It just uh, <laughs> this struck me as very um. Well, which one? Sarah Jessica Parker in Hocus Pocus. Can't remember a character's <laughs> name. I was getting That's that. Funny. And I'm writing for my next solo album, and I recently just released my side project, Midnight Soundtracks debut album, Four Play. So go check it out, and you can hear uh, my solo music on MarcioNovelli.com. And make sure to follow me on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram, which are all slash Marciano Valley. And I'm working on websites for various artists at the moment. You can check out my work and my blog post at electrickiwi.co.uk. And you can find me on Twitter and Instagram at electrickiwi and on Facebook, Electric Kiwi Design. And this episode was brought to you by Chris Keaton Presents. Find out more about what Chris does and how he can help you at chriskeaton.com. And if you'd like to sponsor the show, visit bridge-the-atlantic.com slash sponsors. Thank you so much, Molly. This has been awesome. Thank you. This was so cool. I really yes. appreciate you guys having me on. Yeah, no You're worries. Welcome. Thank and you for please, joining us. Yes, please come back. Okay. Definitely. Maybe we can Definitely. do a special with you and Brandon. You guys can just like, you can just the whole time you can just be like, give me credit. And he'll be like, no. <laughs> give me a director credit. I'm just going to like have him in a chokehold the whole time. <laughs> I love it. Okay, come back again soon, okay? <laughs> All right. Definitely. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Bye. Thanks for watching Bridge the Atlantic. If you like what you saw, make sure to like, favorite, and most importantly, subscribe so that you don't miss each week's episode. Click on the videos above us if you'd like to see more. And please feel free to leave us a comment letting us know what you think of the show. Follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. And subscribe to us on iTunes so that you can listen to us on the go. Thanks again for being awesome. And we'll see you on next week's episode.